Hi, uh, my name is Chris Marshall. For those of you who don't know, uh, I will be going over winter break to Peru to research, uh, to do research for my IS. Uh, I applied for Copeland funding this semester and I got enough money to where I was able to go to Peru for about 28 days. Uh, my independent study is on Tupac Amaru II and his rebellion in Peru in the 18th century. <laughs> uh, I don't really know how to start one of these things off, so I guess that's just a good enough description. Uh, I'll be interviewing people, uh, academics, uh, scholars, and regular people about current perceptions of Tupac Amaru uh, in modern life. Uh, right now, uh, I have a short list of about six people who have agreed to be interviewed by me. Uh, in Lima, there are about four, five. Um, once I get to Peru, it'll become a lot easier uh, to actually contact people because I will be able to walk to where they work. Uh, the most difficult one so far has been the University of Cusco because I can't find any of the emails of uh, the contacts I have on their website. So I'm just kind of hoping I can walk into their offices and ask them one day. <laughs> it's kind of a risky plan, but we'll see how it goes. I hope uh, to be able to get indigenous contact info as I go through Peru, too. Uh, I'll be traveling to the various cities of the rebellion, mostly uh, located around Cusco. I really don't want to try and get down to Lake Titicaca because it's a really far drive, and I'll be going to small towns. And I really don't want to spend the night in them because I'm not sure exactly how safe they are for tourists overnight or how uh, well they'd be able to facilitate me. I haven't really tried it. I haven't really been able to find any kind of info about even traveling to the cities that are around Cusco. Uh, the closest thing that I've come to is I've been assured that there are buses that go there. And worst comes to worst, I can hire a Colombia or a bus to take me out there. Not the cheapest route, but definitely the most convenient. Uh, I'll probably get a Quechua interpreter as well, because it will be safer to travel with someone who knows the area and who can speak with people, and being white, I obviously stand out going into these communities. And I really don't want to appear as sort of the rich tourist coming in, and mostly because I'm not. I'm trying to study, and I'm trying to research there, so I really want to kind of avoid that perception. And it's really kind of a stereotype that's really prevalent there. So by having kind of a guide to help me out, I'm thinking that I'll be able to get in touch with community leaders more effectively. Uh, it'll be easier. I don't know. <laughs> it's just an idea I have. Uh, so anyway, I'm leaving tomorrow evening, actually, for Lima. I'll be spending a week in Lima and the rest of the time in Cusco and hopefully be tra making day trips out to the areas that I've talked about. Um, right now I'm just kind of doing this as a intro to the video blog that I'll be doing. I hope to have some kind of video information each day. We'll see how that goes. Um, obviously tomorrow I'm not going to have one because it will <laughs> be devoted to travel entirely. Uh, I have to leave Worcester at 9am because that's when the bus runs. I don't know if there was another one that I missed, but it's really aggravating because my flight doesn't leave until 5.15. So I'm going to be sitting in the airport until, like, I guess 1, when I can be able to go back through security. Uh, but so far, I guess I'll deal with that. Uh, I get into Lima at about 5.30 in the morning. I have a, an apartment set up with uh, Senora Tuti Tedela, and she is a friend of my former administrator, Car Karina Pacheco Medrano who uh, introduced me to her and she's agreed to put me up for the week for a nominal fee. <laughs> uh, then afterwards, I'll be going to Cusco on the 22nd, where I will be uh, staying in a hostel for the entire time. Um, right now, I guess I can just walk down the list of people that information I have. I don't know. Actually, no, probably not. <laughs> it's not that interesting. and. Uh, it's kind of up in the air. I, ha I don't have set dates that I can uh, interview them yet because 
they've all told me to just call them once I get in the country. So obviously the second I get in the country I am going to find a phone and got, get a little kind of burner mobile phone that I can just add minutes on as I go. Hopefully that'll last and work and hopefully I'll be able to coordinate these meetings on uh, Saturday so that I won't that I'll be able to interview everyone I've contacted over the week. Uh, in Lima, I'm really just hoping to get like kind of some footage of uh, native people. I don't really know exactly what uh, to expect going there. I never really spend a lot of time in Lima, probably about four days. Uh, honestly, when I was in the program, uh, my study abroad program, which is why I got the original, uh, which was the inspiration for my independent study. Uh, I don't really know what to expect really because I never traveled too much around Lima. It's really big. It's about nine million people. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to have some footage to kind of put in to kind of show how large the city is and how kind of developed it is. There's a very big difference between Lima and Cusco, especially in the architecture and just the feel of the cities. Cusco is relatively small compared to Lima, and Lima is very developed. It's very industrial and there's just kind of a perpetual fog that I've heard is called La Gorawa. I don't know how to pronounce that. G-A-R-U accent A. Garua. <laughs> Never heard about it before. But the fog is real and it's from pollution and it's disgusting. <laughs> uh, but it does make for some pretty spectacular sunsets. Um, so anyway, kind of the equipment that I have for this trip, I have this video camera that I got from IT. All this stuff is from IT. Uh, this is a Canon Vixia HF M41, films in HD. It's supposed to be pretty good. Uh, I've used it a little bit and it is really nice. Uh, films pretty clearly, sounds pretty good. I hope uh, it'll be better than this webcam anyway. Uh, yeah, that's the main thing I'll be using while I'm out there. I have a tripod that's packed, so it won't shake around. <laughs> uh, they got me this shotgun microphone that I'll be able to attach to the camera up here. So it'll look kind of funny because they're about the same size walking around with this. Now, this is actually the only thing that kind of works right now for the sound. This has built-in sound, but uh, I got a lav microphone as well, a uh, lavalier microphone. This Whenever I hook it up to there, for some reason, the sound doesn't play back when I record uh, when I uh, view the footage. So uh, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Uh, it was kind of a backup anyway. Uh, this is supposed to be better, and I think it sounds better. Uh, the sound quality is pretty good anyway from here. I don't plan on interviewing too many people in the street, but uh, worst comes to worst, uh, I have this voice recorder which does work with a lot of microphones, so I will have the people that I'm interviewing hooked up to this uh, with the microphone kind of attached to their shirt. If uh, the camera or another source is kind of too, or uh, there's too much noise, too much interference, I'll be able to use uh, the recordings from here. This links up to my computer. Hopefully I'll be able to link up uh, the footage and uh, the sound. I haven't really done that before, but we'll see how it works. Uh, I'm kind of new to video editing and basically everything with video, so this is all kind of an experiment as it goes. I hope it all works out. We'll see. Um, so just kind of bear with me as we go. I won't have too much time each day because I'll be trying to do a lot of research. Uh, in addition to trying to gather footage and uh, interviews just from people on the street and other areas, I'm going to be trying to actually get a lot of reading done. I have a ton of books in my bags right now. Um, I'm trying to get as much of my independent study done during this time as I can. I had a month to do my independent study project for uh, SIT last year, and in that year I was able to write, four, or in that <laughs> four week period, I was able to write uh, about 40 pages of stuff without having done too much research because I was hanging out with friends and doing some things. So. Uh, I'm hoping that I'll be able to do more in-depth research with this and actually get it up to a higher level than what my first project was. And I think I can get at least one chapter done. If not the chapter on modern perceptions, uh, I can get 
a few of the other chapters that I have uh, lined out done. Um, I guess to kind of say where I am, I've done a chapter on the Bourbon Reforms. It's okay. <laughs> I need to supplement it with some stuff, I think, but I've been working on it for a while, so I kind of put it aside. Uh, I've now got another chapter in a rough draft form about uh, kind of the reasons for the rebellion, and I have edited it a little bit. I need to add more information, and there are a lot of primary sources that I can use in all of these chapters. Uh, the primary sources are kind of intimidating. I have this huge stack of papers, all of which have primary sources from the rebellion on them. Uh, each of them kind of looks like this here, except this is a poem, so they're a lot more filled with text. And uh, it's thousands of pages, and it's really useful because I don't have to comb through archives, which are just horrible. Uh, someone already did that for me, but it's also just overwhelming at times. Uh, it's about three rebellions combined in here, the Tupac Amaru Rebellion, uh, the Tupac Qatar Qatari Rebellion, and then the actual Qatari Brother Rebellion, all of which happened within the same span of time. Tupac Qatari in 1781. Tupac Amaru, 1780 to 1783, he died in 1781. And after that, the rebellion changed a little bit, so uh, I usually just say 1781, but his brother and everyone else, his half-brother, carried it on to 1783. Um, the Tupac Atari Rebellion started around the same time, 1780, earlier than Tupac Amaru's rebellion, and ended with the execution of the brothers in 1781 as well, I believe. So, it's a very large source. <laughs> uh, it's really great. I'm not going to be taking it with me because there aren't too many copies of this uh, document in well, the world, really. Uh, I was lucky enough to find them in uh, the libraries at the University of Texas over the summer and make photocopies of them. And that's kind of why I have them right now. Um, other than that, I don't know what else to say here. I hope my trip goes well. <laughs> uh, I won't be getting a lot of sleep tonight because I'm going to see The Hobbit. <laughs> so I'll be zoned out for most of the plane rides, and hopefully I'll be able to catch up on some sleep so I won't be totally dead the first day in Lima, because I really want to just use all the time that I have to get footage and visit places. I have an interesting book that details a bunch of sites that I can go to uh, where I'll possibly get some really interesting footage of kind of indigenous uh, buildings and culture in the framework of this kind of more modern city. And it will give kind of a nice perspective on how indigenous identity and uh, modernity are interacting and how it's either being overlooked, ignored, or, you know, kind of used to supplement the overall Peruvian identity. And I'm hoping to reveal with uh, my project that uh, kind of the indigenous identity of the campesinos who are uh, that's a technical term for the Indians. Indians is really vulgar, a vulgar term. And uh, I really hope to show that uh, this kind of identity is being a little bit downplayed, a little repressed. And it's not really seen as uh, a part of overall Peruvian culture. It's seen as kind of an ancient past thing that's not really useful except in terms of tourism and other things. If They don't, in my opinion, seem to have a really big connection to their past in terms of going forward. They seem to think that they either have to abandon all of the cultural aspects of the Inca in regards to advancing globally uh, as a culture instead of uh, using it to kind of enhance their identity. I don't know, it's really poorly worded, but something kind of along those lines, I'll figure out how to say it later. <laughs> Uh, anyways, yeah, that's all I have for now. Next time we do this, I will be in Peru. So I will see y'all then.